Praise the Lord. This is Prophetess Christine from Seattle, Washington. Welcome to the broadcast today. And I'm going to be talking today about recovering. Recovering without fail. Okay. Try that again. Recovering without fail. And God is a God of our breakthroughs who wants you to recover without fail today. So, invite your friends and like your followers. God bless you. Uh, probably is Jackie, the Hope Coach, for, joy, for joining us all the way from Georgia. So good to have you on the broadcast today. Hallelujah. And uh, you just bear with me for a minute here. I'm making a slight adjustment. You hear some music in the background. That is our dear brother, Tim Clement. Hallelujah. Continue to Remember to lift him up in prayer. Amen. We believe God for his total, full recovery. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. We thank God for what he's doing by his power and by his spirit. Oh, yeah, I like that one. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Technology is wonderful. We thank God for it. <laughs> and in the midst of it, um, yeah, it can be challenging when you, you know, are doing several things at the same time. So we're broadcasting uh, through Periscope and also through Youth Ring. So I want to, again, welcome all the followers. And um, invite your followers. Invite your followers if you're on an Apple phone, slide from left to right, Android from top to bottom. And invite your followers to come along with us as we're going to be talking about recovery today. And recovering all without fail. Whatever has been stolen from you, whatever has been uh, taken from you, we're going to be talking about recovery and how you can get it back how you can get it back. Maybe you've gone through an illness. Maybe you've gone through a loss of a loved one. You might have gone through uh, a number of different things in life where you feel broken, where you feel shattered. And God is the God of restoration. And he wants to restore you today. He wants to make you whole. Where there's nothing missing, nothing broken in your life. And so uh, we're going to be uh, talking about some of these things today on the broadcast and so again that background music is prophet Ken Clement amen we love our dear brother Kim Clement continue to uh, believe God for total restoration amen for him today and so praise God again for all of you that are joining us I think I saw Monica join in also and invite your followers to come. Praise God, we're going to be talking about restoration and recovery. So if you know anybody who needs recovery in their lives, you want to share this broadcast with them today. All right. Praise God. God is a God of recovery. No matter what you've been through, God wants to restore you. And he wants you to recover all, all that's been lost in your life. He wants it fully restored and recovered in your life. And so, he is the God of breakthrough. He is the God that can break you through into that place of full restoration and recovery. So receive restoration and recovery today. Have a great expectation, even as you're on the broadcast today, that God is going to restore you, that God is going to bring recompense into your life. Maybe you've been wronged on your job, wronged in life, wronged in many different ways. Hi there. God wants to restore your life. What was stolen, he wants to bring restoration. What was broken, he wants to mend, he wants to heal it, he wants to heal you. Hallelujah. So, we're going to get started with our message today. I'm going to begin to pray, be in agreement with me as I pray. Thank you, Prophetess Jacqueline, for sharing. Hallelujah. Again, I just want to invite you to invite your followers from left to right. 
on an Apple phone from top to bottom, slide down on that Android and invite your followers to come to the broadcast today on recovering and how you can recover without fail. Whatever the enemy has stolen from you, God wants you to have recovery today. Thank you. So God bless you. Amen. As you're inviting your followers to come, invite them to come. Left to right on that Apple phone. Left to right. All right. So with that, all right. Thank you, Cynthia, for inviting your followers to come. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here in just a few minutes. All right. As you're inviting your followers to come from left to right on your Apple phone, top to bottom, on the Android phone. And also, I just want to let you know, you can catch a previous broadcast at catchme. Uh, is actually catch.me. So it's K-A-T-C-H, K-A-T-C-H, K-A-T-C-H dot me, catch me. And you can watch the previous broadcast. So there's several broadcasts there that you can grab hold to. All right, and so we're going to uh, go ahead and get started in just a couple more seconds. Thank you. God bless you. Amen, woman of God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Just a few more minutes here. We're going to allow you to invite your followers. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you for that heart. All right. Amen, amen, amen. God is good. He is a good God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, sometimes you just know um, that God is getting ready to do something in the spirit. <laughs> you just have that knowing in your spirit. God's getting ready to do something, you know, big time for his people. And um, I believe that. I believe that today. And I believe that he's going to do something great in your life. Amen. So everybody just say that God is doing something great in my life. It starts with expectation. With you believing and you having an expectation that even when you wake up, having that great expectation, it's not just another day. This is a day that the Lord has made a brand new day where he's getting ready to do something great in your life. And as you begin to proclaim that daily, God is getting ready to do something great in my life. You're going to see how expectation will begin to rise in you and you will begin to expect and believe God for the impossible for divine connections, for the Cornelius connections, for the heavenly connections to begin to take place in your life. Things that only God could have arranged in your life. And that's what God has for each and every one of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for doing it by your power. We're doing it by your spirit, that it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by your spirit. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise for that today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just praise him for a minute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord, today. We bless you. We worship you. We magnify your name. There is no God like you. Hallelujah. We adore you. You are the Lord of glory. You are the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. We just praise you, Lord, today. We thank you. We magnify you. We lift you up. We exalt you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're the glory and the lifter of our heads. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Shara Bahaya Rabasura. O Raboshya Karadakiri Yarabasanda Rabosanda Rabosanda Rabasia. Hari Yarabari Yandurabo Sanda Rada Yarabasindi Yarabasia. Shekiti Yana Mahaya Rabasura Sakaradakiana. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing by your power. 
by your spirit, by your power, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for recovery and restoration. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the victory today. Thank you for the victory today. Today, Hallelujah. God bless you from Moscow. Welcome, welcome. Invite your followers to come from left to right on that Apple phone, top to bottom on the Android. Oh, we give you praise today, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for those coming from Moscow, from those coming from different parts of the world today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, for that which you're going to do by your power and by your spirit, for that which you are doing even now, even now, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for changing our atmospheres, for shifting our atmospheres. We thank you that everything around us, Father, prepares itself for your presence, oh God, for you to move in our midst today. We thank you. We welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for moving. We thank you for the anointing that breaks every yoke. I bind every spirit of doubt and unbelief. I bind and break the power of the tormentor spirit. I break the power of every yoke and every bondage of the enemy from over the lives of the people that come on this broadcast today. In the name of Jesus, Father, I give you praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving. I thank you that it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Oh, we give you praise today, Lord Jesus. We honor you. We worship you. We bless you. We exalt you. Hallelujah. We adore you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. There's nothing like your presence. There's nobody like you. Nothing that can take your place, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you for those that are coming on today. Lord, let them feel your presence, oh Father. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Let the yokes be broken today. In the name of Jesus, over them and over their families, oh God. Over their cities, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise. Uh, thank you. Hallelujah. I'm well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you honor and glory and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lamb of God. We worship you, Jesus, uh, Messiah. We worship you, Lord of glory. We worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords. Uh, we thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for your power and your presence. Uh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lamb of God. We worship you, Lamb of God. We thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Those of you that are coming on that are familiar with the block ministry, help me with the block ministry today. Hallelujah. We sanctify, hallelujah, this broadcast in the name of Jesus. That's where some people are going who don't know Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We adore you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We honor you and we bless you. We thank you that there is no name like the name of Jesus. There is no name that is greater than that name. It is that name we adore today. It is that name that we worship and magnify. It is that name that we lift above every other thing and situation. That name that is above every name. The name of Jesus. We proclaim that name today. That name, hallelujah that is great and mighty that name that is exalted high and lifted up we lift it up today hallelujah we declare your glory lord jesus in the earth we declare your glory today hallelujah we declare your goodness and your glory lord jesus hallelujah for you are great and greatly to be praised and we honor you today we worship you today we exalt you today we declare your glory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We exalt you. Hallelujah. We applaud you. Hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. The heels melt like wax at your presence, Lord Jesus. The heels melt like wax at your presence. Oh, we give you praise today. We give you honor and glory today. Hallelujah. We thank you. Your name is exalted. Your name is exalted, Lord Jesus. Your name is exalted. Hallelujah. Your name is exalted. Ha, shatayala bosando. We give you praise, Jesus. We worship you. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you, Lamb of God. 
We give you all the praise, all the glory. We magnify your name. We magnify your presence, O oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We adore you. We bless you. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you and we praise you. We worship you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He is our champion. Hallelujah. He is our champion. Hallelujah. And we give him the glory. We give him all the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. How I love Jesus. I feel his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Well, praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Amen. We are uh, here to bless the Lord. Amen. And so, I'm going to release this word today, amen, this word of recovery, this word of restoration, hallelujah, because God is the God of recovery and restoration, hallelujah, amen. Can anybody testify today, has God delivered you from something, has he allowed you to recover something in your life that was stolen before? He is the God of recovery, can I get an amen, hallelujah, glory to God, he is the God of recovery. Amen. We thank God for that today. So with that, hallelujah, he is so worthy. Amen. Yes, he is. He's worthy of our praise. If you'll turn in your Bibles to uh, the book of Proverbs, we're going to start out in the book of Proverbs in chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs chapter 4. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs chapter 4. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs chapter 4. And in Proverbs chapter 4, oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word that is spirit and life, health and healing to all of our flesh, that at the mention of your name, every knee must bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority and dominion over the works of darkness that have been assigned to us, that have been assigned to each and every one on the broadcast today, that have been assigned to their families, that have been assigned to uh, their generations, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare the power of your word that it will not return to you void, but accomplish everything that you're sending it out to do. For your word is spirit and your word is life. And so we thank you for the life of your word today. We thank you that it gets in our sinews, that it gets in our bones, that it gets into every cell and fiber of us. And we thank you, Father God, that it drives out sickness and disease and plagues. It drives out everything that is not of you. It drives out evil spirits. It drives out everything that is not of you. And for this, we give you the praise for the life of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book of Proverbs, the word of God tells us, starting with verse 20, it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Eyes and heart. It says, For they are life to those that find them. They're life to those that find them. So you have to be seeking for them. You have to be seeking or inquiring or searching after uh, that word, the word or the things of God, for them to come alive in your life. As you seek for them like a treasure, as you seek after God, he draws near to those that draw near to him. And so as we seek after his word, he unveils and he opens up his word. He cracks the word as it were, the code uh, as it were on the word of God and revelation will begin to spring forth uh, into your life. And so he says, uh, for they are life to those who find them. And in any area that you have a question in your life, when you begin to seek and inquire of the Lord, he will be found of you. It says, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Maybe you've gotten to the end and there's nothing else the doctors can do. But Jesus is the great physician. They're practicing physicians. I love doctors. They're practicing physicians. And Jesus is the great physician. And so even though they may come to their end, he never comes to his end. And so the word of God says they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, the things that go in your heart and the things that come out of your heart. Watch the things that are in your heart, an evil heart of unbelieving even. It says, for out of the, 
out of the heart, out of it spring the issues of life. The issues of life will spring forth out of your heart. Things that affect you and impact you spring forth out of your heart. Whatever is in you will spring out of your heart. Before you even speak, there are things that are in your heart and then they come forth. There's something called premeditated murder. Why? Because it was in the heart of that person. They thought on it. They meditated on it. And then they took action. And so it's important what you put in your heart. It's important what's in your heart and what is building uh, your heart. In other words, what are you putting in constantly uh, on a daily basis? What's going in? Because what's going in is going to affect what comes out. Hallelujah. And so you got to guard your eyes. Hallelujah. There's some things I don't want to see because I don't want it to get in my heart. There's some things I refuse to see because I don't want it in my heart. Have you ever seen something and then you wish later that you could get it out of your head? But you let it in your eyes and as it got in your eyes, then it began to affect your heart. And so there's some things that you just got to make up your mind. Okay, I'm not going to look on that because I don't want it in my heart. All right. A lot of times people get bound up in different areas of their life because they allow, God bless you, daughter of Jesus, because they allow certain things to get in their heart. And so out of the heart flow, the issues of life, it's important, extremely important what you let in your heart. Sometimes other people come to you and they want to bring things and dump things on you and put things in your heart that God doesn't want in your heart. So you got to guard your heart, make decisions about what you allow to go in your heart. All right. And so let me continue here. And so the word is life and health uh, to the flesh, even to the bones. Amen. God bless you for that. Amen. Let's look at something else here. Let's look at um, Psalms, Psalms 18. And in the book of Psalm 18, we're going to see something here. And I'm going to just break down a couple of words because as I was preparing today, there were a couple of words that dropped in my spirit. And I want to talk about those today, and they have to do with re recovery. Okay, so Psalm, Psalm 18, Psalm 18, and verse 37, it says, I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back till they were destroyed. He said, I have pursued my enemies. I have pursued my enemies. This is a Psalm of David. We know he was a warrior. But how many times in your life has there been something that the enemy has stolen and you just let it go? You didn't try to go after it. You didn't claim the promise of God. There's a lot of sick people today because they won't go after the promises of God. There's a lot of people that are uh, dealing with lack or areas of poverty in their life today because they won't go after the promises of God concerning prosperity, concerning wealth. And so you have to make up your mind that you're going to go after what is rightfully yours. You have a blood-bought right to healing in your body. you got a blood-bought right to wealth, to prosperity. The Word of God says Jesus was made poor for us, that we through his poverty might be made rich. And sometimes uh, in talking to believers, it's hard. There have been many times I've uh, led believers through confessions, and we get to a place where I say, okay, Say, I am rich. Confess it. Decree it. Declare it. Repeat after me. Say, I am rich. And they have a hard time saying that. Why? Because there's a hard something up here in the wiring that won't let them say that with conviction. But it's a reality. It's a reality that Jesus died for us. That we through his poverty might be made rich. That we might be made rich. Amen. Hallelujah. Declare it today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus doesn't want you in poverty. He wants all of your needs to be met, and he wants you to be a source of supply to others. Amen. And you can only do that when all of your needs are met fully and abundantly. Then you can be a great source of supply to others. Amen. And so there's much that we have to do, and it takes finances. I remember years ago, my pastor, <laughs> my pastor years ago, this is back in the early 80s, when they started traveling to the nations, Okay, and he began to speak to the church and begin to tell us about uh, the vision that he had for Asia in particular and going to the nations. But there was no finances readily available. And so we were believing, we were praying, 
And I remember him going to the airport. He was stretching out in his faith and he would go to the airport and he would say, he would say to the people at the ticket counter at the airport, do you have a ticket for me? He, he would call out his name and say, do you have a ticket for me? Literally go all the way out to LAX airport and ask the people at the ticket counter. Well, that was his faith. Amen. Well, God honored his faith. But praise God, it takes money to go to the nations. It takes money to go around town. Hallelujah. You need gas. You're going to preach the gospel. Okay. It takes finances. And so if you're going to do business, you know, it takes money to make money. So, you know, it takes money to make money. So you got to have money to invest and to reinvest. After you make money, then you got to take some more of that money and reinvest it. And so money, there's a scripture that says money solves all things. And so the reality is money is needed. You shouldn't be afraid of money. Thank you for those hearts. All right. You shouldn't be afraid of money because what you fear, you back up from. But when you have no fear about it, you can walk boldly into it. You can embrace it. Okay. These promises of God, you can embrace. You can embrace the promise of wealth. You can embrace the promise of healing. You can embrace the promise of restoration. If you've gone through a divorce, if you've gone through heartbreak and sorrow, you can embrace the promise of recovery in those areas that you can love again. A lot of times people get burned in a relationship. I've talked to people, they've been burnt in relationships and it's 10 years removed, 20 years removed, and they still haven't had another relationship that's been a successful relationship many times because of fear. Because even unconsciously, on an unconscious level, people are putting something out there that says, reject me, because that's what you're going to eventually do. See, if that's in their thought processes, then that's what begins to happen, because they're drawing that very thing to themselves. And so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you think you're rejected, you'll find that people will begin to reject you. But if you uh, begin to decree and declare the word of God, that you have the favor of God, that the favor of God encompasses you, then you'll begin to see favor coming to you. You begin to decree it and declare it. And eventually over time, as you begin to confess that word, it drops down and it gets in your heart. And you begin to internalize it and you begin to see it. And then you can begin to walk into it. God said to Jeremiah in chapter 1 of Jeremiah, what do you see? What do you see today? Woman of God, man of God, what do you see? Because as a man think of in his heart, remember, so is he. All right, let me go on here. So we've uh, been looking at, um, we looked at Proverbs, and in Psalm, we looked at Psalm 18 and 37. And David said, in Psalm 37, I pursued my enemies and overtaken them. I've overtaken the thing that was coming against me. I've overtaken the thing that tried to steal from me or tried to rob from me. I've overtaken it. Hallelujah. I've overtaken it. We're going to look at something else a little bit later because I love what David said in one of the, the books of the Bible when he talked about overcoming, overcoming the thing that had uh, come against him. And that's what God wants. He wants us to live victorious and overcoming lives that whatever is coming against you to pull you down, whatever is coming against you to depress you, to stress you, uh, to make you go outside of what God has ordained and destined for your life, God wants to pull it down. God wants to pull it down. Hallelujah. He wants to destroy it. He wants to annihilate it. He wants to break it. And He wants to break the power and the influence of it from over your life. And so when we look at this, hallelujah, in uh, the book of Psalm again, Psalm 18 and 37, the word overtaken there uh, means... To overtake, it also means to catch up. It means to attain, to reach, to be able, to afford, to take hold, to be able to get. And sometimes you got to come into a place in your life where you're able to get, where you realize, you come into a realization or revelation that you are able to get back everything that the devil stole from you. That you come into a realization that you are able to, that you have an ability that comes from God. Because this word also means ability. It means to be able to afford. It means to take hold, to be able to get. It means surely, it means also to remove. 
that you even come into a place in your life where you realize that God has given you the power to remove every obstruction. That he's given you the power to remove everything that has come against you. That he's given you the ability. That he has given you the ability to overcome that thing that came against you. You have the victory. You have the power. And so once you realize that, you can move in a place of authority, move in a place of dominion, and you can recover without fail all that the enemy stole from you. Okay, so let's look at something else. Let's look at, um, and I'm going to look at a few words today that have that same meaning. So keep that, keep that word in mind there. And then let's look at something else. Let's turn over to Galatians 6. Galatians 6. Hallelujah. Galatians 6. And in Galatians 6. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to look at Galatians 6 and verse 1. Now, this is a familiar uh, passage of Scripture here in Galatians 6 and 1. It's going to be interesting. Galatians 6 and 1. All right. And in Galatians 6 and 1, it says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. And so if, if somebody is overtaken, the Word of God says, restore them. And sometimes we don't know how that person is being overtaken. Okay? Because sometimes there's an assignment that's assigned to them, and we don't understand the magnitude of that assignment that was assigned to that person. And so sometimes... The thing that seems like, wow, they should have been able to overcome that. You don't realize how that thing that was assigned to them overcame them. That's why the Word of God says, you who are spiritual, restore one another in the spirit of meekness. Because we don't always know or understand what somebody else is dealing with from a spiritual standpoint. And how it's coming to them and how it's overtaking them. And so, we're just admonished. To restore one another. And so it says to restore one another in the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself. Alright. Now that word overtake. It comes from a word that means to take beforehand. To take beforehand. So those who are overtaken. To take beforehand. So it could have been something. It means to be caught. It means to be detected and it means to go on ahead and so sometimes there are snares and traps that have been laid for somebody ahead of time there are things that are uh, directly tied to them in terms of the family that they come out of and sometimes it's going to be a first time generation in other words um, when I lived in Asia I ministered to a lot of people who were first-time generation Christians. And so they had to overcome a lot of things that people who were born into a Christian family didn't have to overcome. They had to overcome a whole lot more than those who were just born and raised into a Christian environment and family. They had to overcome a whole lot more. And so there are some people uh, that come out of that environment and sometimes there's a stronghold uh, that's related to the environment they came out of that is trying very hard to overtake them and pull them back again. And so they got to fight uh, twice as hard uh, to maintain what they have, to maintain their salvation, their deliverance, their healing, um, whatever it is in their life. And so... The Word of God tells us, restore one another in the spirit of meekness. All right. And so sometimes it goes way back. And so when you're looking at people, and um, those of you that are on, that are ministers, looking at people and situations that they're going through, keep that in mind. That sometimes it's something that's deeply, deeply rooted in the generations that somebody is fighting with. They're fighting uh, to get a breakthrough 
that's going to be generational. That that breakthrough that they get is going to literally uh, be generational throughout the generations. Okay. All right. And then I want to um, I want to share in another area, and that is um, let's look at something else. We are here in the Book of Galatians, but let's move back. Uh, and let's look at First Thessalonians chapter five. First Thessalonians chapter five. Actually, I was going to go somewhere else, but I, I think it's First Thessalonians chapter five I want to go to right here. First Thessalonians chapter five, and let's look at verse um, verse fourteen. Hallelujah. And uh, in verse fourteen, it says, "Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted." And uphold the weak, be patient unto all. Okay, uh, let's see. That's not the scripture I'm looking for. That's a good one though. Okay, um, but there is another one that I'm looking for, and um, I will tell you this. Hallelujah! It talks about the day of the Lord. I thought it was chapter five and verse fourteen. Okay, and it could be. Uh, no, it's not four and fourteen. Okay, but I'll tell you what it says. It says, you are not in the darkness that the day of the Lord should overtake you. That's what it says. You're not in the darkness that the day of the Lord should overtake you. And we're not in darkness as believers that the day of the Lord should overtake us. In other words, when the day of the Lord comes, it's not going to be a surprise to us. Uh, the Word of God says you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. And in that day, it's not going to overtake us. It's not going to overtake us. There's going to be a knowing in our spirits even as there's a knowing you know even in your spirits today you know if you have sensitivity to the spirit that we're in a whole nother place in the body of Christ right now than we were two years ago we're in a whole nother place we're in another place there's been such a shift in the earth and we're in a whole nother place in the kingdom of God um, I know uh, in 2000 14, September 2014 was when the Lord spoke to me and told me that I was entering into a new era, a new era. And at that time I realized, okay, there's something that has shifted, that has taken place, and we're in a new time, we're in a new era in the kingdom of God. And so there are things that are being done um, that shifted over two years ago even now almost two years ago and so we're in another place praise God and um, wow that's all I I will say right now about that because I'll, I'll be going in another direction and I want to stay on course for this message but uh, let me keep going here so we're here in uh, Thessalonians and and that's what that scripture says that I was looking for. It says, you're not in darkness, that the day of the Lord should overtake you. You're not in darkness. And so that day is not going to come for us like a thief in the night. We're not going to be overtaken by the darkness, as it were. All right. And so let's look at something else. And let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. All right, First Samuel chapter 30, and in First Samuel chapter 30, let's look at verse 8. It says here, So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. You're going to recover all. You're going to get it all back. You're going to recover all. Okay, can I hear somebody say Amen that you are going to get it all back because God wants you to get it back what the enemy stole from you okay and just like he did for David he wants to do for us today he wants us to recover all without fail and so David inquired he sought the Lord he took some time to get in the presence of God you know that's what it means to really wait upon the Lord to wait upon the Lord means to exchange your weakness for his strength and so when we wait upon the Lord we are we're receiving revelation. We're receiving new strength. We're exchanging our weakness for his strength. What an exchange. And so it says in 30 and 8 again, David inquired. He sought of the Lord. And he asked the Lord whether or not he should do something. Um, 
interesting, isn't it? In the day that we live in, uh, it's a very powerful thing that if uh, we would really inquire of the Lord more, we would get more spiritual um, results. In other words, we get better results. It says to us in verse 8, the latter part of that, uh, shall I overtake them? And he answered him, yes, God is speaking to David then, and he's still speaking. He will speak. He will speak to you even. Hallelujah. God is still speaking. Shall I overtake them? David said, and he answered him. God answered David, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Recover all the enemy stole. Recover all without fail. You will without fail recover all. Hallelujah. I love that. Hallelujah. And then David says later, he says, uh, speaking of uh, Belperazim, the God of the breakthrough, that he has uh, broken through by my hand. Uh, David said, God has broken through by my hand. There's some things that God wants to break through by your hand, by you boldly stepping out and aggressively in the spirit, taking back what the devil has stolen from you. You'll begin to see the fallout of that in the natural as you begin to break through every barrier and every restriction and everything that the enemy has fought you uh, with as you begin to take authority over it, as you begin to break out in the spirit, as you begin to deal with it, hallelujah, deal with it in the spirit. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, the word of God says, take unto you the full armor of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, deal with it in the spirit. Deal with it in the spirit. Stop fighting in the flesh. It's not a fleshly war. Hallelujah. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ and bringing every thought captive. You got to take those thoughts captive. You got to bring those thoughts into captivity. You've got to put those thoughts in prison. You got to bring them into captivity. You got to annihilate them. Those things that the enemy tries to bring against you, fiery darts that he tries to get you to focus on, tries to get you to think on daily. The enemy doesn't have creative power, but one of the things that he works is that he tries to suggest to uh, believers and people certain things in their life. And so he'll have them rehearsing things of the past and things that people have spoken over their lives. And what do they do? Through thinking on those things, through meditating on those things, they begin to walk out those things. Remember what I say, hallelujah. What I said last week, hallelujah, you're under no obligation to receive something that someone says about you if it doesn't line up with the word of God. Amen. The word of God says, think on the things that are good and pure and perfect and lovely and a good report. Why are you thinking about the things that your father, your mother, your brother, your uncle or whoever said that is not in line with the word of God? Many times they said those things, hallelujah, and they said those things out of the flesh realm. They were not biblically based. They were not based on the word of God. They were simply being used as a tool of the enemy at that time. They were speaking only that which was perpetuated in their life. And many times that had been spoken over them. They had been told those negative words and they continue to perpetuate them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. And so we thank God. We thank God. Hallelujah. We thank God uh, for deliverance. And we thank God for the word of God. We thank God for the word of God that is spirit and that is life, health, and healing to all of our flesh. Amen. And so the word of God is alive. And you have the power within you to break out and to break beyond every restriction, every barrier, and, every, and to take back everything that the enemy has stolen from you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just feel... Uh, some uh, some of you, your spirit is rising up. Hallelujah. Uh, some of you have been so suppressed. Amen. Hallelujah. But God is breaking you out. Amen. God is breaking you out. He is breaking you out. He's breaking you out of every area of limitation in your life. He's breaking you out because he wants to break you into something new. Amen. And many times you have to break out to go into the new. All right. And so let me continue here. I was talking there in uh, the book of 1 Samuel about David and how 
after. The word of God says pursue and you will overtake. You will overtake and you will recover all without fail. God is a God of recovery. He is a God of restoration. And he wants to bring absolute full restoration in your life. Amen. Let's look at something else today. We're going to go on and we're going to look at Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Bless the Lord. Deuteronomy 28. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. And we're going to look at verse 2. And it says, Hallelujah. It talks about the blessings of God. And God is speaking and uh, commanding blessings upon the people of God. And it says, um, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. You know, obedience. There's a blessing to obedience. There's a blessing when you walk in the things of God. The Bible says there's a reward for the righteous. And so there's blessings that come to those uh, who walk uh, according to the word of God. Who choose to walk. Who choose to obey the word of God. There is a blessing that follows. Amen. There is a reward for the righteous. Okay, and so when we look at this. It says, blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. That's a good scripture to meditate on. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord coming into your life and literally just overtaking you. Overwhelming you and overtaking you. Can you even get ready for that kind of blessing that overtakes you? That overtakes you. That overtakes you. That literally, why are you thinking about it? You've been overtaken by the blessing of the Lord. And it just keeps overtaking you. Hallelujah. The blessing of the anointing. The blessing that makes you rich and adds no sorrow. The blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Coming upon your life in every area of your life. In your family. In your relationships. In your uh, business endeavors. The blessing coming upon you in your house. Upon your house. In all that you set your hand to. Amen. The blessing. That's the kind of blessing that God wants to come into your life. A blessing that overwhelms you. A blessing that just slaps you all up and down your head. Hallelujah. A blessing that overtakes you. Glory to God. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. There's a blessing in obedience unto God. Hallelujah. What is God saying? What is he asking? What is he requiring? There's a blessing for that obedience to the Lord. You know, many times you might have done things for the Lord and maybe you didn't see an immediate, um, uh, an immediate blessing that came into your life. But there is a blessing that comes that when it does manifest, it overwhelms everything that you have even possibly thought possible in your life. That it's something that makes you to call him Jehovah. Hallelujah. Gyra with emphasis that is something that just so overwhelms you that all you can do is lift up your hands and give him praise amen the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow there's not sorrow attached to it in any way you don't have to apologize for the blessing of the Lord it adds no sorrow it adds no pain there's a lot of people have things in their life but it has added pain to their life. Instead of adding blessing and increase, it has added pain to them because of the way that they acquired it. But the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow. You can go sleep at night. you got a peace that passes all understanding. You have joy in your believing. You have joy in the midst of whatever it is that you're doing because the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow, no pain. Hallelujah. That's the blessing you want manifested in your life. No pain. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at something else. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's look in the New Testament. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the New Testament, we're going to look. In the book of Third John, Third John, verse two, it says, "Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers." 
that you may be in health just as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. Hallelujah. And so he says, Beloved, I wish above all things, I wish above all things that thou would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So to the degree that you're prospering in your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. All right. Dealing with those emotions, dealing with emotional issues in your life. To the degree that you're prospering in your soul. Okay. You're going to prosper in every other area of your life. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Am I a pastor? Yes, I've pastored for 15 years here in the state of Washington. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, about uh, close to 10 years in um, Los Angeles. Hallelujah. So we thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for his goodness. Amen. God wants you to experience and to enjoy full recovery full recovery in every area of your life. Amen. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Non-denominational. Hallelujah. So we thank God. We thank God for the word of God. And those of you that are out there, hallelujah, I just want to encourage you as I come to a close, hallelujah, uh, today, that Jesus is the same Jesus that he was for David. He's the same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed his mind about seeing restoration in your life. You might have waited a long time. You might have endured some things. But I believe also that there's some things that God has been doing in you. Because many times for you to receive the end of your faith or to receive that blessing of recovery... Sometimes there's adjustments that have to be made. Amen. And sometimes the Lord is doing things in our life to bring us into that place so that when the blessing comes, that we will still see you. <laughs> in other words, sometimes people have been blessed and we don't see them anymore. I remember praying for many people throughout the years and the blessing came into their life. And we didn't see them at church. You know, a lot of times people got blessed. They got blessed with a new job, and then they started working on Sundays. Or they got blessed, and they just got blessed in such a way that um, we didn't see them as often as we saw them before the blessing manifested. <laughs> you know, whether that was a husband, or whether that was financially, or whether that was uh, uh, some other kind of blessing that came into their life. And so the blessing of the Lord is to increase you, is to enlarge you, and is to enlarge the lives of those around you. The blessing, when it comes, it will do that. It will be a true blessing. It will be a true blessing. It will not cause your head to be pumped up or swollen up where you can't walk through the door. It will be a blessing that will cause you to walk in the grace of God. It will cause the blessing to be manifest and perpetual in your life. There's sometimes people get a blessing and it's short-lived. But the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. It's long-term wealth. It's long-term prosperity. It's not temporary. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow. And so we thank God for that today. Amen. And for that blessing that he wants to build in your life. Long-term sustainability in terms of a blessing manifesting and being perpetual from generation to generation. That is the God that we serve. He wants the blessing in your life to be generational, to be passed down, to be a legacy of blessing in your life and in your generations to come. That they will also know how to get a hold of God in prayer. That they will also know how to access the wealth that is in the earth. That it doesn't matter. They can be in the midst of famine, but they will know how to get a hold of God. And they will not go under. They will go over because of that which has been passed down to them through your spiritual legacy. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow. It maketh rich in every area, rich spiritually, rich financially, rich with wealth, rich in every way. 
rich in relationships, rich in communication, rich in every way, in every area of your life. You have good relationships with your family, good relationships with your children, communication. You're able to communicate. A lot of people are married and they just don't communicate. They've been married for years and still haven't learned how to communicate with one another. But the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and adds no sorrow. And many of you in your times of, as we're going through the desert experience, you've learned many of these skills. You've learned how to uh, do without. You've learned how to abound and how to be a base. You've learned how to communicate. You've learned how to tell people what you want and what you're not going to tolerate. You've learned how to tell people how to address you. You've learned how to walk in who you are in Christ. You've learned how to walk and how to access your royalty. You've learned some things in that valley experience. And so that when God brings you out into your wealthy place, you know how to handle that. You know how to behave in that environment and you're able to sustain, be sustained in that new environment. Hallelujah. You know, there's an environment of wealth that's totally different from an environment of lack. There's different people react differently in that environment, in different environments. <laughs> environments of wealth versus environments of lack. They have a different um, mindset. They have a different way that they look at things. They have a different way that they walk in in terms of how they look at things. They have a different, you know, even I, I've experienced this, they have a different level of believing. Even people that are non-safe have a different level of believing. When you get in certain environments, they believe they can do a whole lot of things. They can believe they believe they can do this. They believe they can do that. And I'm saying, come on, where's the Christians? Where's the true believers at? It's time for the level of belief to come up. Hallelujah. And so it's time to recover without fail all that the devil has stolen. Get your belief up. Hallelujah. God is a God of the impossible. He's a God that can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask, think, or imagine. Hallelujah. Can you see it? Can you see yourself living the life that he has prophesied to you concerning the life that he has promised you in the word of God, a life free from sickness and disease, a life free from poverty and lack, a life free of torment and fear, a life free of all those things. Literally, truly being the head and not the tail, that's the life that he intends for us to experience. Well, praise God, I'm going to pray for you now. Believe God for you. Hallelujah, to get you stirred up, to get you moving, to get you to come into that new place, even in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those that are on this broadcast today. I thank you, Lord God, for the anointing that destroys every yoke, every bondage of the enemy. I break the power strongholds of the mind, strongholds, Father God, that are wrestling even against their will, the, the, the war in their flesh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, contradicting things in their mind. I break the power strongholds, confusion, lying spirits, torment, mental stress, Father, everything, Father, that has fought them and has fought their destiny and has fought their wealth, has fought them, Father God from walking into the fullness of the recovery that you have for them. I break the power, Father God, of every tormenting spirit. Ah, loose your grip in the name of Jesus over their minds, in the name of Jesus over their souls, in the name of Jesus, fleshly things that war against their soul. I break your powers in the name of Jesus. I loose the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And Father God, I thank you even now for the angels of the Lord that are moving, that are ministering, hallelujah, your divine deliverance in Jesus' name. Thank you that you sent your word and you delivered us. Thank you for sending the word of deliverance this day, hallelujah. And I thank you that it overtakes, hallelujah, that it overtakes, Father God, everyone listening to this broadcast, the word of deliverance, oh Father. Father, we thank you, hallelujah this day for the word that is spirit and life and for the life of your word father permeating the hearts of your people today and those that are listening to this broadcast or that will listen to the broadcast 
Father, we honor you, we bless you, we thank you today. We give you honor, we give you glory. I break the power of strongholds, that stronghold, Father God. Uh-huh, that one that's struggling with that stronghold right now, that has struggled with it for years. Uh, hallelujah, that stronghold in the mind, hallelujah, that thing that has become a stronghold in the mind that has made them to feel like God does not want to bless them. I break the power of that lying spirit, you lying spirit. I break your power right now in the name of Jesus. I command you to loose their mind. Oh, yes, you will in the name of Jesus. I break your power in Jesus' name by the authority of Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Be broken in Jesus' name. I loose the fire of heaven. Be destroyed every spirit of the enemy that has tormented them in their mind. Father, we thank you for the fire of heaven even now. We thank you that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. That Jesus came to destroy, to melt, to loosen, to set free from. We thank you that Jesus came for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That he might destroy, melt, loosen, set free from the works of the devil. Now loose their minds in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus that because of your blood, we have a blood-bought right to deliverance. We have a blood-bought right to salvation. We have a blood-bought right to walk in wealth, to walk in the riches that you provided for us in the earth. Thank you, Jesus. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, for he was made poor for us, that we through his poverty might be made rich. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for enriching your people today, not only with wealth and riches, but with the word of God. Thank you for sending your word and healing. Thank you for sending your word and healing your people Thank you for sending your word and healing those that are listening to this broadcast and ministering your deliverance this day. The anointing destroys the yoke. The anointing destroys the yoke. There are yokes that are being broken right now. The anointing destroys the yoke. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by his spirit. The spirit of the living God. The living God. God is not dead. He is very much alive. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this today. We thank you, Jesus, for your resurrection power. Thank you for resurrecting dreams today. Thank you for resurrecting lives today. That people will no longer be the living dead, but that they will be resurrected into their destinies. Resurrected with new hope new joy for the future. Ah, Shahaya. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory today. This is the day of your divine deliverance, your divine breakthrough. This is the day. Hallelujah. Revelation comes to you, flows to you. This is the day. Hallelujah. Of your deliverance, of your recovery. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for it. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for restoration. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Lift those hands. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Receive. Receive. Right now, receive. 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 Receive receive as the anointing flows to you now receive as the yokes break off of you today receive in Jesus name receive as the anointing destroys the yoke receive in Jesus' mighty name 
Father, we glorify you. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the anointing that destroys the yoke. Oh, glory to God. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We honor you. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Be magnified. Be glorified, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. All hail, Emmanuel, King of kings, Lord of lords, bright morning star, and throughout eternity, I'll sing your praises. We're going to sing praises unto him. And we'll reign with you throughout eternity. We're going to reign with him throughout eternity. And we reign with him in this life. He has called us to rule and to reign with him in this life. Hallelujah as well. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for giving your people a place of dominion in the earth. You said that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ. And so remember that today, that he has called us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And from this posture, from this position, this place in the heavenly realm, we are to operate out of, function out of. He has called you and I to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according to the book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. Amen. We're called to rule and to reign in this life. We thank you for that, Father. And we bless you. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty, majestic name. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. I decree it. I declare it today that you are ruling and reigning in Jesus' name. That you are rising up in your faith and in that posture that he has given you from that place of authority in the heavenlies, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And that as you pray, you pray from that place. As you take authority, you take authority from that place in the heavenlies. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for it. We worship you. We give you praise and honor and thanksgiving. Amen. Well, I bless you all. Amen. I bless you all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I just believe that there are some of you that are listening, that are in ministry, and there's a new place that you're going to walk in, in ministry. There's a new authority coming on you that you're going to walk in, in ministry. There's a new place that you're going to walk in, even those of you that are not called to the ministry, but you have businesses or you have other things that you do, whether it's a job or whatever it may be, but that you're going to walk in a new place of authority and recovery, expecting recovery to come. Walking in a new place of authority and taking authority over the works of darkness that have been assigned to you and those assigned to you. Hallelujah. Those in your spirit, even of influence, that there wouldn't be people even in your spirit that the enemy is taking advantage of because you're taking your posture, your place in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for that today. In the name of Jesus, time to take your place. Hallelujah. It's time to take your place. Amen. I'm going to share this last scripture with you because I feel like the Spirit of God is leading me to do so in the book of Ephesians so that you can see it and you can know exactly what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. The book of Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 2. 
It says, starting with verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace, you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is what he has done. He has made us to sit in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that is our place. And so from that place, rule and reign from that place in the heavenlies. Amen. Take your place, your posture. Glory to God. As you pray, hallelujah, and know that he has seated you there in the heavenly places. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for that which you have done and continue to do in the lives of your people. Thank you, Lord God. I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. People of God, be blessed. Amen. Be blessed. Hallelujah. I feel somebody pulling. Hallelujah. In the spirit, I just feel like a pull coming from someone. Hallelujah. And all the Lord is saying is, it's on the inside of you. Begin to declare it. Decree it and declare it. And rise up in it and walk in it. You know what to do now. Just begin to do it. Hallelujah. That greatness in you, that power is in you. God wants you to release it. And so begin to decree and declare. Begin to find declarations that fit along with what it is that you're dealing with. Begin to ask the Holy Spirit to give you scriptures and begin to decree and declare those scriptures over your life. There's life in the Word of God. And there's many good books that you can get that have declarations. Hallelujah. Apostle John Eckhart has a series of books that have declarations. I encourage you to get them if you don't have them already. Uh, Dr. Cindy Trim has some great books also on declarations that you can make and prayers that you can make. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God today. Amen for his goodness. Hallelujah. While I'm talking about books, I'll just share with you also. I have a book called Reverse Side of Love. And this is a book that I wrote uh, while I lived in Asia after talking to and counseling with many single people. They were asking me the same question, so I decided to put it in a book. Amen. And then I made the books available. Hallelujah. And there are many of these books that are circulating around, and they've blessed many people over the years. And uh, people have gotten married as a result of reading the book. Um, yokes have broken off of people even as they read the book. I remember I was going through Jordan once and somebody saw the book. And um, he actually, I was going through customs. And he saw the book and he took the book. <laughs> he didn't ask me if he could have it. He just took it. I didn't argue with him. Hallelujah. And um, praise God, there's a prayer of salvation in it. Hallelujah. So, uh, Praise God. You can order that book at uh, christineholmesmason.com. Uh, again, christineholmesmason.com. I also have another book. This book is called Wealth Building, 10 Cents at a Time. And this book is about wealth. Um, I've taught on financial education and, um, and teaching on mortgage protection as well as uh, retirement planning. Uh, this is a book that I wrote a few years ago. Uh, after doing seminars on financial education for uh, 15 years. And so there's a lot of things packed in that one little book. You can get that book also at christineholmesmason.com. And you can also go to Spirit Song International Ministries.org to get additional information on the ministry. Spirit Song International Ministries.org. Again, that's Spirit Song International Ministries.org or Christine Holmes Mason dot com for uh, the books. If you want to order one of the books or get more information, the Christine Holmes um, Mason dot com website is more for my business website. It's my business and things that I do related to business. Uh, Spirit Song International Ministries is where you dot org is where you're going to see more information on the ministry. All right, and so with that, I'm going to close, hallelujah, amen, and um, we'll continue uh, next week at 12 o'clock, 
p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Again, this is Prophetess Christine Holmes signing off uh, with you today from Spirit Song International. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful, blessed day, a day of breakthrough, and keep walking in the breakthrough. God bless you.